Today's episode is one that we actually haven't done yet. We, meaning me, (laughs) have not recorded yet. And it is about getting bulky because that is a common misconception that we see when women start weight training or we talk about weight training or we get girls in the studio. They're like, I just don't want to get bulky. So we're going to discuss how you can achieve more of a lean muscular appearance, some things that people do wrong. If you're looking to build lean muscle, it's really about maximizing your muscle growth while minimizing any body fat you're putting on. So we'll dive into that because that's super important for you to understand when you are starting your weight training endeavors, right? A lot of misconceptions about getting bulky have to do with other issues that are not related to the actual training. Let's take a step back. For those of you that are new here, my name is Diane Flores. I've been in the health and fitness space for over 17 years. I'm an IFBB bodybuilding pro, which also makes me a professional dieter. And I'm a personal trainer. I'm a health coach and I have been tracking macros and calories for a very long time. I've been 200 pounds. I have professionally dieted my whole professional bodybuilding life. I've gained weight. I've lost weight. I've been shredded. I have been obsessive. I've hated my body. I now love my body. I've had unhealthy eating behaviors and everything in between. All right, you guys, welcome to Boss Bitch Radio. Thank you for being here. We're in a new little wall and trying something a little different out today. I'm getting restless with my usual setup and we're trying to figure out something a little bit better, something looks a little more polished and podcasty. So bear with me. This is not the end result, but we're we're getting there. Something you have to know is that building muscle takes time. Okay. So this is not something where you're going to start working out and in three months, you're going to just be like jacked and shredded and just way bigger than you were hoping. So that is something that I just need you to just ease your mind about right now, because it's not how it works. I mean, some of us who want muscle (laughs) wish it was that easy, but it is indeed not that easy. So with weight loss, it's a little bit easier. So hear me out. Weight loss is more of a calorie deficit. You understand like you have to be in a deficit to lose body fat. With muscle, it is like the tortoise. The tortoise is slow and you're just like, (laughs) are we there yet? It's definitely a process. So once you grasp that, that muscle building is going to be a long game, And fat loss, while yes, can also be a long game and is not a bad idea, it tends to be a little bit more of a faster process and you also see things a little bit quicker when you're dropping body fat. Now, I know what you may be thinking, that does not mean you skip one or the other, that means we work on both and we're gonna chip away at this here right now. All right, a frequent sentiment we hear, like I mentioned at the top of the podcast, is I want to put on muscle, but I don't want to look bulky. What people think is that they're going to start lifting weights and they're going to walk out of the gym looking like Iris Kyle. If you're not in the bodybuilding world, you probably won't know who Iris Kyle is. She is the goat of female bodybuilding, okay? The greatest of all time. If you're like, what's the goat? She's not a billy goat. She is the greatest of all time when it comes to bodybuilding. She has... 20 bodybuilding titles. She's an IFBB pro bodybuilder. She competed in the more heavyweight category of bodybuilding for females. So thinking that you're going to look like Iris Kyle, if you're just training three days a week and, you know, doing some weights is ridiculous, right? You can see how it's obviously ridiculous. It's almost like saying I'm, I bought a sports car but I'm afraid to drive it because I might become a NASCAR driver, right? That is just two completely opposite ends of the spectrum. Just because you drive a sports car does not mean you're going to be a NASCAR driver. Same thing. Just because you lift some weights, you're in the gym a few days per week, you are not going to walk out of the gym looking like Iris Kyle. It is very, very rare that anybody achieves that level of muscularity 
And you have to think about some other factors that are into play there that a lot of women don't understand or they still have some old school assumptions, which is one, genetics plays a huge role in terms of how a lot of us put on muscle and keep muscle and also physique enhancing drugs and all the extreme measures that somebody who does something like heavyweight bodybuilding is doing. You're likely not doing those things. That doesn't mean there isn't a risk of developing a bulky appearance when you lift. So we will dive into that a little bit further. However, it is very, very rare and it has a lot to do with the diet component of it. I know, sad day, right? But we we are going to give you some things to really think about that you can be like, aha, okay, this makes sense, right? So with that, let's talk about the diet piece of things. To maximize your muscle gain, we talk exhaustively about eating enough protein, right? Obviously, the weight training is the stimulus you need to actually grow the muscle, but the protein is the necessary macronutrient that you need to actually lay down new tissue after you do the training. Now, most people aren't really quite sure how to figure out how much protein they should be consuming. I'm going to give you just some loose guidelines and something to run with to start calculating some numbers. Okay. There's a range. Okay. If you are newer to working out and not used to tracking your protein and you maybe are over 200 pounds, you might want to err on the side of using a smaller calculation to figure out how much protein you should be consuming daily. So with that, Again, very general guidelines, but 0.7 is where I like to start with clients that fall into that bucket, okay? 0.7, and you're going to multiply that by your current body weight. Now, if you know your lean mass or your lean muscle tissue number, that's getting a little more nitty gritty, and I would say use that number. Um, multiply your lean body mass by that number. However, not a lot of people have access to that or accurate ways to track that. So as just a blanket rule of thumb, 0.7 times your current body weight. Now, if you've been lifting for a while, you've been in the gym, even if you don't have a structured program, but you get the concepts, maybe you've been training for a little while longer, maybe you really have some um, hard and fast goals to put on some muscle, you're going to want to increase that number closer to one gram per pound. And there is a lot of research out there that is showing if you fall within that range, you are, you're doing great. You're ahead of the pack. You're likely still going to make some gains with your muscle tissue falling within that range. Now, let's say you come up with a number. It's a, let's just use a round number. For example, we're going to say a hundred. It's probably more than that, but just for the sake of numbers, you want to break this down over several meals. So if you have to hit 100 grams of protein a day because you want to put on some lean muscle, don't try to slam that back all in one meal. And this is another reason why I'm not a fan of intermittent fasting. I think it serves its place in certain periods and phases of your life. But I think for a day-to-day -day kind of constant way of living, I don't think it's ideal. But when it comes to your protein, you're going to want to spread that out over the course of the day. You're not going to want to try to eat that in one or two meals. It's a lot. It's a lot for your digestive system. It's just uncomfortable. So spread it out throughout the day. One thing that I often mention is each meal should be focused around what the protein source is. That's the easiest way to knock out your protein is that when you sit down for a meal, the first thing that you should be thinking about is what's my protein source? What is my protein source to build the rest of my meal around? So that is tip number one. I know it's probably pretty basic, especially for a lot of you who've been listening for a while, but basing your meals and going in with the mindset of what is my protein going to be?
I have a great, just simple list of protein snack ideas. So if you find that like snacks are an issue for you, make sure to check out in the description or the show notes to get that download. It's 23 protein snack ideas. That'll be helpful for you to just have a jumping off point to even do like some grocery shopping and maybe try some things out that you haven't yet. Now, the key. All right. Let me sip my tea with the key. You like my cup? This is kind of funny. The key is that your protein sources need to be lean sources of protein. And this is where a lot of people get it wrong. So I want you to think like egg whites, low fat or non-fat Greek yogurt, extra lean cuts of beef, white fish, low fat dairy, protein shakes, things like that that are high in protein and low in dietary fat. If you select a protein that's higher in fat, this is where it becomes an issue because it's going to be higher in calories. And we'll discuss that a little bit later. But this is one reason why women find that when they train, they get bulky is because they're consuming protein, but they're not consuming the right amounts of protein and it's too high in fat and they then put on body fat. So an ideal way and not everybody's favorite, is to measure. Measure your portions so you understand how much protein you're getting and really comprehend what that looks like. You don't have to measure forever. You don't have to track forever. But this is an incredibly useful tool to give you a visual so when you're not around a food scale, you don't have to rely on that. You can say, okay, like I I got this. I'm probably off by like an ounce or a half an ounce. Not a big deal, right? But you start to comprehend how much that looks like. And also you start to understand what that feels like from a satiation standpoint. And you understand, okay, four ounces of chicken breast, you know, I'm very full or I'm not full enough. So you should know when you're going out to eat, like, ugh, I'm stuffed. This was probably more than four ounces. You get the idea. Now, a simple tool for when you don't either have a food scale or you're out and about and you're eating at a restaurant or somebody's house to eyeball a portion, because I know this freaks a lot of you out. You're like, I went to this party. I have no idea. I just entered whatever. And it it was stressful. And it's like, calm yourself. It's okay. It's one meal. It's one situation. And I'm going to give you a useful tool to measure your protein that you have with you all the time. And that is your hand. Okay. So for women, you want a palm sized portion of protein. I have huge hands, thankfully. Um, so it is specific to your body, your hand. Okay. So one palm size portion of protein. Now for men, that is going to be two palm sizes. Okay. This is just an easy and simple way to visually look at your meals and say like, okay, I have about a palm size um, portion of protein. Now, when I'm talking about your palm, I'm not talking about your entire hand. I'm talking about the center of your palm, okay? And it's not like the center of your palm stacked up to the ceiling, okay? So let's just... Let's just not try to cheat the system there, but the inside of your palm, not counting the fingers. All right. Same thing for men. Now, something that is easy that I do because y'all, I am not trying to reinvent the wheel. I'm lazy. I'm not particularly very adventurous in the kitchen anymore. I've come up with a bajillion recipes over the years that I've made for clients and my blog and YouTube and all these things. And I'm just like, I'm good. Like, I'm eating to eat because I enjoy it and also for flavor, but I'm pretty basic. I like the same thing. So I always suggest you find like three to four protein sources that you enjoy and just rotate between them, right? Like rotate between them, try different things if you're sick of, you know, beef or lean turkey or chicken breast or whatever. Just swap them out. Try some different recipes. Try some different seasonings, things like that. Now, sticking to a lean protein helps you achieve your protein goals without adding on a ton of excess calories from a higher fatty protein source, which also means that you're less likely to be over consuming calories that are going to have you either stay stuck or gain weight and not contribute to that bulky appearance by putting on body fat. So spoiler alert, if you haven't caught on already, 
the reason why you look bulky or people look bulky when they weight train is because their diet's not in track. Okay. And like, trust me, I've been there a time or two. So I, I do know from from experience, if you can keep your protein sources low, this means you're going to put on less body fat as you are putting on lean muscle, which is so key and so important. And honestly, the easiest way to stay lean year round, it's picking lean protein choices and also navigating the rest of your meals appropriately. So that way you are satiated and fueled and you're working towards your lean muscle goals without putting on body fat. The other thing that you want to do to make sure that you are not putting on too much body fat, which is going to lend that bulky appearance, is tracking your progress. Now, this does not mean just the scale, okay? How much muscle are you putting on, right? I have seen so many women time and time again that start with us at the studio. If, for those of you that are new here, I have a, a personal training studio in Modesto where I've got a team of trainers there that trains all the amazing women in our community. And we'll get some new clients from time to time that will start and they'll say like, ah, oh, I'm gaining weight. I must be putting on muscle. And they're not doing the diet coaching piece of our services, right? When they join, they're just doing training. They aren't signed up for nutrition. And that always is a little bit of a concern for me. It's a, it's a little bit of a, not a red flag, but a a kind of a yellow flag. Reason being is, especially if you are not used to weight training and and your goal is fat loss or weight loss, if you aren't working on your nutrition with us, we don't know what you're doing when you leave the gym, right? We don't know what you're eating, what sort of mindset you have around food. If you think like, oh, I worked out, so I deserve a treat, and then you overeat, you know? So there's a lot of the dietary component that if you're working with a personal trainer, but they are not working with you on your diet, that is something you have to be very proactive about and work on yourself or lower your expectations of your results. I'm just being honest because personal training, whether it be weight training or whatever modality of training that your trainer puts you through is a fraction of the piece of the puzzle when it comes to your body changing and you seeing fat loss or inches melt away. Okay. The diet is going to be huge for that. Now, does it feel like you're gaining fat when you are weight training? If it does, you need to ask yourself, okay, am I overeating and take a really hard look at your diet? Because if you start weight training and you gain four to five pounds in like two weeks, you're not gaining muscle. Like you did not put on four to five pounds of muscle in two weeks. Okay. Probably not even two months. Uh, unless you are a genetic freak, you're very young, you're new to weight training and you are like hitting it hard sister. Okay. But it is highly unlikely that you're putting on that much lean tissue in a short period of time like that. If, especially if your diet's not in check. So moral of the story is if you are getting that bulky appearance or feel like you have that bulky appearance, it is likely because you are gaining too much fat too soon. Let's talk about training. Now, none of this matters if you are not training effectively and appropriately for your goals, right? So if your goal is, I want to change the shape of my body, the training program needs to reflect that, right? And that is likely going to need to be some type of resistance training, some kind of weighted exercises, machines, barbells, things like that. I generally recommend three times a week for women who are new to weight training. That is a nice baseline to start from. You can hit multiple body uh, parts, you know, muscle groups in three days. It allows for plenty of time for recovery. It's not incredibly overwhelming in terms of, you know, six days a week and, you know, whatever. Three days is pretty average, pretty realistic. And it's a really great starting point for those that are newer to weight training to get consistent and honestly start to see their body shape change. Now, if you're more advanced, you've been in the gym longer, someone like myself, I've been weight training for 
almost 20 years, you know, probably longer. Some of that was intermittent, but most of the last 20 years, I have been doing some kind of weight training. So if you have been training for a while, there is a point of diminishing returns. And what I mean by that is if you are training properly, you are eating, you're recovering, you're doing all those things, you are likely going to hit a cap of your genetic potential. And then anything after that is going to be very, very slow and needs to be honestly monitored and very thought thought through in terms of wanting to put on muscle. Women are usually going to hit a threshold, right? We only have enough testosterone in our systems naturally, which if you didn't know, women as women, we have testosterone uh, floating around in our system. Definitely not as much as as men, but that is going to be the cap is how long have you been training? You know, what are your normal hormones doing? And if you are a natural free range organic chicken, which means you're not doing any kind of physique enhancing drugs like you know, any kinds of steroids or things like that, you are going to hit a cap. And it doesn't mean that you should stop training. It just means you're probably not going to see a ton of growth unless you take a step further with certain things. And that might mean getting into the gym six days a week, right? Like if three days, you're just kind of like, I just feel like I'm kind of stuck here. You know, you like how you look, but you're not really progressing. You're keeping an eye on your diet. You might need to get into the gym six days a week. And that would mean that you train certain body parts twice per week. So they're getting hit with more stimulus. Now, more does not necessarily always mean better. We want to make sure that you're recovered from your prior training sessions. But if you are recovering well, you're sleeping well, stress isn't too high, you're hydrated, you know, you're you're taking your supplements, you're doing all the things and you want to take it to the next level, adding in another training day, maybe one more full body day, something is going to pulse you a little bit more with muscle gain. So that is something to consider if you've been training for, you know, well over a year or two. Now, you can eat all the protein your little heart desires, but it is not going to do shit for your muscle growth if you are not training and stimulating that muscle to grow. You can't just eat protein and and think, oh, I'm eating protein, like I'm going to build muscle, right? No, there needs to be a stimulus to tell your body, hi, we need to grow that muscle. And by grow, people get scared. Women a lot of times get scared of that word. That is what your muscles are doing, right? You're toning them, you're sculpting them, you're making them lean. However you think about that, essentially you're you're either growing muscle or you're not growing muscle. And so this is the conversation that we have oftentimes with our clients, which is you eat the protein and you got to do the training or else your body's not going to change. You you likely stay, you know, at maintenance, uh, but there is still potential for you to lose muscle while you're eating protein and not actually pulsing that protein to actually do its job. You're going to have to be consistent. You need a consistent training routine for all of this to make sense. And three days a week as a baseline is a fantastic set point, okay? Now, the other thing you have to do is you have to consider progressive overload. And progressive overload basically just means you're challenging your body when you get into the gym. And it should get better every week in terms of your strength should increase. You maybe should be able to add a rep or two if you can't increase the weight. Maybe you're getting better range of motion. Maybe you are holding uh, the reps a little bit longer with some more time under tension. So that is key is progressive overload. You got to challenge the muscles or they will just adapt and they will not change. And that is why sometimes you see people at the gym that maybe you've seen training for a long time and they always look the same, right? I know I can think of a lot of people that I've seen at the gym where that is indeed the case. What happens is a lot of times people just go through the motions, right? They're just like on autopilot. They go into the gym and they're just like, okay, 12 reps. That's all that's on my plan. But there's no 
there's no like hustle about it, right? There's no like, okay, last week I did 50 pounds on the leg extension. This week I'm going to hit 60 or I'm going to hit 50 for 15 reps, right? And this is a little bit of a harder sort of guideline to give anybody like and generalize because everyone's a little bit different in terms of their, you know, their strength and their training knowledge and their history and and things of that sort. But generally speaking, when you get in and you're following a program and let's just say it's like three sets of 12, if you're getting to that 12 and you still got like five reps in the tank and it's like not doing anything, you're not feeling anything, it's not challenging, it's not really producing any kind of stress on the body, then you're likely in autopilot going through the motions and you're you're maybe going to keep what you have in terms of your muscle, but you're not going to do much by way of improving it. Next, we're going to talk about some common myths when it comes to building lean muscle. And the first one is that you cannot build muscle with low rep ranges, right? Like three reps to five reps. That's very much like a power lifter's range of rep range for their training. Most people associate that with building bulky muscle. Okay. So that's one myth. The second myth is that lighter weights and more reps are going to make you like more tone and it's going to give you long lean muscle. I'm like shaking my head for those of you that aren't watching on the YouTubes. And these are myths that are perpetuated and they keep women from actually lifting heavy, which is very effective in changing the shape of their body and will not make them bulky unless their diet is absolute garbage. So those myths are absolutely false. Okay. You don't build lean muscle or bulky muscle. You just build muscle, right? And the way that your muscle actually looks and takes shape comes down to a few things, but one is genetics. Okay. Where are your muscle insertions? Some people have And as a competition coach, I've seen the whole gamut of muscle development, muscle insertions, lengths, right? And because I dissect humans' physiques as a competition coach, this is something I'm very aware of because it plays a huge role in how your physique looks and why some women or bodybuilders in general will do better competitively than others. And it does not matter, right? It does not matter. They could be training the exact same. They could be doing the exact same program. However, if one genetically has different muscle bellies and insertions and limb lengths and things like that, their muscles are going to appear different. They're going to look different. If they have shorter limbs, if you are have shorter limbs, it makes sense that your muscle bellies are probably going to be shorter and you're going to need to work harder likely at your diet to make sure that you don't gain too much body fat to give off that bulky appearance. But when you are trying to build muscle, there's no like, oh, this exercise is going to build lean muscle and this exercise is going to make you look bulky. There are certain weight training exercises that will tend to like thicken some like muscles that a lot of times women don't want thickened. So we will try to like avoid certain things for women when they have certain goals, specific exercises you will not want to do. But you are either building muscle, keeping muscle or losing muscle. There is no, well, you know, this exercise builds long muscle, long lean muscle. (laughs) And this exercise is going to make you bulky, right? It's That's not how it works. So I say it again because you will have that bulky appearance if you have too much body fat, all right? That is definitely going to lend itself to your bulky appearance. There's It just means that there's a lot of body fat laying over the top of that muscle, and it's just creating that bulky appearance. Now, I know you want to build muscle as quickly as possible, right? That is the goal. It's like, let's expedite this process. Unfortunately, it is a slow and steady burn, but some people will build muscle quicker because genetically, it's just they're blessed that way. But 
even if you are one of those people where you're like, I put on muscle really easily, you're still not going to, as a female, build muscle as quickly as you would if you were a female bodybuilder who was manipulating her hormones, okay? Now, something to consider is when you start weight training, you can stop at any time. So if you're training and you're like, ugh, I just feel like my arms are getting too big, okay? So I've gone through that myself personally where I am no longer competing in figure anymore. I'm not, I'm not competing at all. So for me, my goals are mainly selfish reasons, right? They're no longer, I'm trying to create a physique that is fitting a bodybuilding standard for that division for me to win. It is now how do I like my body, right? Like it's, and that's why I love weight training is because you're literally the artist of your own physique. If you want to have a nice, big, juicy ass, you can do that, right? You can do that. It's, I've done it on hundreds of women, women before, right? I've done it on myself. If you want toned arms, like those things, you can plan your workouts accordingly to what your physique goals are. Now, this isn't the same as like spot reducing, right? Where people are like, how do I get rid of this, right? It's not the same, right? We're creating some muscle shape in that area, but in order to see it, you are going to have to drop some body fat. With that being said, let me circle back to my example that this past year and a half, two years where I was like, okay, not competing. I loved my muscular upper body when I was competing in figure. I still do. I really enjoy it. I love, you know, in the summer being tan and being tank tops and just people like, oh my gosh, your arms, blah, blah, blah. But I'm not interested in, in growing my arms anymore. I'm not interested in making my biceps any bigger. Like I'm happy with the size they are. And also my back muscles. If you feel like you have a wide back, I will usually look at at women and I can tell and it you, I can tell by the length of their clavicle usually if they have a really long clavicle they probably have the potential to put on a little more upper body size versus somebody who's a little bit more petite but with that I very rarely train my back muscles anymore I do just a smattering just to keep the muscle stimulated and make sure that I'm not atrophying too much, but I'm not trying to grow. Um, I'm fine if I lost a little bit of muscle there, uh, but ultimately, if I want to not grow that anymore, I just don't train it, right? So I really pulled back on my upper body training. So like I was saying earlier, if you're more advanced and you wanna put on muscle and you train six days a week, that was my life for like 10 years, okay? I was training most weeks, five to six times per week, and in the figure division, I was most certainly training my back and my shoulders um, twice per week. So over time, I put on a lot of muscle tissue with that. But now I just don't do it. I don't want any more muscle there. You just don't do it. You can stop at any time. And I've trained a lot of women over the past 17 plus years. And I have yet to have someone come up to me and say like, you know, I got to stop this weight training thing. I'm definitely putting on way too much muscle. Okay. It's very, very rare. In fact, you will notice that before it, ha it happens, right? You're not going to just like wake up one day and be like, holy fuck, I'm jacked, right? Like you're going to see that. You're going to notice your body changing. And if there's something that you're not liking about it, it's really easy. You just stop training it. The other thing to remember, it is very hard to sustain muscle your body just doesn't want to, okay? Muscle is an expensive tissue <laughs> to carry on your physique. So your, your body isn't gonna naturally just wanna retain that uh, as easily as you think. So it's going to be a matter of, this is definitely a work in progress, right? For most people, especially in the beginning. Most definitely in the beginning, it is a work in progress. All right, now let's talk about some assumptions with rep ranges. We touched a little bit on that earlier as far as rep ranges for building muscle, but let's go into some assumptions, right? We talked about the low rep ranges, like two to five rep ranges. Think like your, your power lifting population, low reps, high, high weight. Um, so 
so there's that that camp. Then we have the hypertrophy camp, which is where I tend to fall in, where we're trying to uh, grow, you know, grow your muscle tissue. We're not really working mainly for strength. There will be strength as a byproduct, but we're going more for the vanity muscles, right? That's why we're training. And Anything in that 8 to 12 rep range is generally going to be in that hypertrophy range. Then you have the endurance, um, kind of endurance range. And I do use this intermittently with some of my clients, but very rarely. But that's going to be like your 15 plus rep ranges, right? A lot of people in the like boot campy, crossfit type of world, you'll see a lot of this like AMRAPs and high reps and things like that. That's going to be more for like endurance-based training. However, you can still put on muscle mass with all three of those options with powerlifting, hypertrophy, and endurance because you're still, you're still stimulating the muscle. Knowing that you can put on muscle with all three of those options that I just gave you, you're like, okay, well, so then what do I do? The key is the right amount of effort. So if you're kind of just going through the motions, your body's not challenged enough, then you're likely not going to put on muscle. So your, your goal is where can I put in the most amount of effort and still reap the benefits towards whichever goal you're trying to achieve? This does not mean failure with every exercise. So for those of you that are like failure, what does that mean? Like failure sounds like a bad thing when it comes to weight training, particularly the style that I, I'm most known for, which is more of the hypertrophy training and, you know, changing the shape of your body. When it comes to those, that type of training, you do not want to go to failure with every exercise. It's not ideal, not every set, every exercise. You will destroy your body in terms of recovery. You will feel like garbage. And honestly, it's counterintuitive. So you should not be training to failure every single exercise, every single session at all. Now, there is a sweet spot and it and it is requiring you to have hard, consistent effort every time you train. There is a time and place for failure, but it is not with every exercise and it's most definitely not every session. All right. So what if you find that you're someone who feels like they're getting bulky, right? Here we are to the meat and potatoes. Speaking of bulk questions to ask yourself, did you, or did I add a bunch of protein into your diet? Yes or no? The answer is yes. Then the next question is, is it a higher fat protein source? Are you paying attention to that, right? Is it higher calorie? Is that potentially what is the issue when it comes to you looking bulky? Because if you are consuming higher fat protein, then you are likely in a calorie surplus, which naturally means you're going to put on more body fat And it's going to give you that appearance of being bulky and it's going to make that actually worse. So just to set the record straight, the combination of having muscle and too much body fat is what gives you that appearance of looking bulky. So your goal is to be very aware of your protein sources, make sure they're coming from lean sources of protein and that you aren't in a calorie surplus. And if you haven't done the tracking, it's going to require you to do some homework to make sure that you are indeed on the right path. So let me say it louder for those in the back. It is not that you are bulky. It is that you have too much body fat over your muscle to see the muscle you built underneath. You did not put on too much muscle, okay? It's very unlikely that that is actually the case. What we're all looking for in this adventure of putting on muscle is adding more muscle to your frame while staying lean, right? As lean as you can. Now, there is a sweet spot for that because you do need enough calories to build muscle. So it does not mean you're dieting and also trying to put on muscle because those are two opposing goals. However, you do need to eat within your body's demands to build muscle and to stay relatively lean so you can see that shape taking place as your body changes. 
So naturally, that means for a lot of people out there, it is needing to get a little bit leaner so that way they can indeed see the muscle that they built underneath the body fat. All right. So that was it in a nutshell. It's a pretty straightforward answer. Just to recap, you're probably not getting bulky from your weight training. You're likely getting bulky from your diet. And at any point where you feel like you've put on too much muscle, you can most certainly stop lifting for those body parts. But at the end of the day, if you struggle with feeling too bulky from weight training, it is time for you to get real with yourself and make sure that you are not overeating and therefore causing too much body fat to lay over the muscle so you can actually see what the hell you've been working on, right? If you are ready to build some booty meat, okay, some booty muscle with yours truly, listen, if you follow me over on the gram, you be knowing. I love all things booty. We That's like our specialty over at the studio. You know, you got Coach Glitter, who is like transforming glutes left and right. But leg day and glute day are our most popular days in the studio for sessions because most women fear going into the weight room and trying to do any of the lower body exercises or machines by themselves that require you to like use plates and things like that. So we be knowing, we do some things. I would love for you to join my seven day glute goddess challenge. Yes, ma'am. That is starting on April the 1st. So what this is, it's a weight training challenge. So this is not going to be a booty band or a body weight challenge. Those things are great if you want to just be healthy and move your body and like do some things. But I'm talking to the woman who is like frustrated with her lower body, puts her jeans on and is like, "Ugh, this is like cutting into me. It feels too tight. You know, maybe is stressed out with the appearance of their legs, does not like to wear shorts, things like that. And also has a gym membership or a very well-equipped home gym and is willing to get into the gym, do the work, bust through any fears and really see what a true butt building glute sculpting program is. Okay. It's only seven days. So you're not going to like walk out of the seven day challenge looking like you got a Brazilian butt lift. However, it is going to give you very clear idea of the types of exercises that you should be doing. If you want to change the lower half of your body, there's also going to be some cardio stuff we'll give you as well, because obviously, you know, talking about not looking bulky, we want to make sure that you are including some kind of cardio in there for a little bit of calorie burn. And then we're going to do some nutrition stuff as well. That's going to be hosted more in the Facebook group. So I'm not going to like give you a diet or anything. I just really want you guys to get the bearings on with getting into the gym, because that is going to be the biggest dial mover in terms of adding on muscle, right? Is getting in those nice machines and really knowing how they work and utilizing them. So you'll get three glute workouts, like gym glute workouts. We have an app. I'm so excited. So it'll be hosted in an app. You will open up your app. You'll know exactly what machines to do. You will see videos of myself and my daughter. So all of the videos are of us explaining to you how to do the exercise and you just need to get in there and execute, okay? We'll have some amazing prizes for those that participate. You know, my overall mission is just we need to get more women confident in the weight room, right? That is one of the areas that a lot of women struggle with. They get in their heads. They're very self-conscious. They think everybody's staring at them, and they feel stupid, and they don't know how things work. I've heard it all. And it makes me sad because I – was that way once too. And then I was just like, I know this is where the answers are to what I want to achieve. So I just kept showing up nervous, uh, not confident, unsure, feeling stupid, you know, embarrassed, thinking everyone's staring at me, all the things promise you that was me. And with time, it becomes like anything else that you are new at that is unfamiliar that feels foreign that you maybe don't know much about and you kind of go into it with a little bit of you know nervousness anxiety with time that all fades and now i could walk up into any gym 
like a boss ass bitch and know exactly what every machine does, how to use it, where to find things. And if I don't, I just ask somebody, right? It's not that serious. It's just exercise. So anyhow, I would love to have you. I would love for you to drag your friends along and have them do it with you so you can get in the gym together. We can cause a ripple effect of more women lifting and know that you're not going to get bulky. You're going to build a nice set of glutes and a nice set of legs well beyond the challenge. If you even stuck to that challenge and just did that training program for months on end, you'll see huge benefits. Okay. So We'll get you the exact workouts. Everything's going to be lined up on March 31st for the challenge to start on April the 1st. It's going to be so much fun. I cannot wait. So make sure to check out the link in the description and in the show notes. And if you are driving or you're not in a space where you can do that just quite yet, guess what? I have a website now, which I'm so excited, y'all. You have no idea. Like, I almost cried a little tear of joy because when I started the podcast three years ago, bossbitchradio.com was not available for purchase as a domain. Somebody had it parked for like two grand. And I was like, okay, well, let's just see if this podcast thing is like a thing. (laughs) And it's a thing. Y'all love it. So I decided, you know what? I need a website. And we checked the domain and it was available last month. So, uh, Website is built out. You can check it out. Bossbitchradio.com at the top says work with me. You'll see the glute challenge there and poke around. All my podcasts are hosted there. If you have a question you want to ask on the podcast, you can submit it there. And I have like some blogs and all kinds of fun stuff. So go check it out and join us for the challenge. All right. I love you guys. Thank you for tuning in and let's fucking do it. Awesome.